Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Ghost Prime, and I'll take a look at MP56 Trailbreaker. Now, I, I pre-ordered this guy from Amazon Japan, and he came out to about $120. And uh, I, I think that, that's not so bad. It's, it's less expensive than some of the other options for Trailbreaker. Trailbreaker as a character was one of the very first Autobots in the cartoon, and he did, he did appear in both the original uh, Part 1 and 2 of More Than Meets the Eye. He is also one of the very first 1984 Diaclone figures to be released. And I think it's weird that it took this long to get an official masterpiece of him. There's a bunch of third-party offerings of this guy. There has been for quite a while. He does transform into a fully licensed Toyota Hilux uh, pickup truck, which is kind of cool. My dad actually had an 81 Toyota pickup when I was growing up, and I've always liked the way the old Toyotas look. So I'm glad that he retains that mode and is officially licensed. So anyway, please like, subscribe, let me know in the comments what you think about this guy. So without any further ado, let's get to the review. All right, taking a look at the box, he comes out a very standard masterpiece box that shows the alt mode and the robot mode on the front there with, you can kind of see me in the reflection there. It is very glossy and matte finish with the masterpiece logo right there to car tommy and long life design and trail breaker so on the top you have the logo the side there he is being all posed up the other side side view of his toyota mode and on the back there is a bunch of images that show him in different modes so you have him with the little satellite dish, which I, I'm blanking on what it's called right now. You can open up the doors and the hood, a little size comparison. There he is firing with his blast effect piece. He's got different faces. It's kind of hard to see there. There is a list of what you get in the box, which I will go over in a few minutes, and a post mode. And I assume this is a little bit of a blurb about the character himself. Unfortunately, I do not read Japanese. So uh, let's crack this guy open. Okay, and like all Masterpiece, he is packaged in vehicle mode in a clamshell case. And you also get a set of stickers, a card, and instructions. Let's go over those first. There are the stickers. Um, I don't know what the black and white Autobot logos are uh, for. But in the instructions, it does say that these are for this little spot right there. If you can see it right there. Kind of make it more uh, like the toy. And then you have his, his collector card, which has some his specs on it. And a nice uh, hand or computer rendered engine right there. The instructions also offer more images not just the how to transform. There's so some orthographic views. Um, it have the, there you are, the parabolic antenna. Shows some more views of him, posed views, strength, some, some dimensions. And these just unfold be very, very large. All right, and getting everything out of the package, you have two heads here, or faces I should say, which are painted up in a nice, uh, like the visor, the nice metallic blue, and he's kind of a, a screamy face. It looks like the inside of his mouth is painted as well. It's hard to tell if that plastic is painted. Looking at the back of it, it looks like it, it might be painted. There's actually a surprising amount of paint on this guy. So he has there, and a kind of have a happy face. All right, moving on, here you have his parabolic antenna. And this, I think, is done in a nice finish. You got just a, a gray plastic, but this is chrome. You got some paint right here with the, the hose. And you can twist it. You have an extra fist. You have his little tri-blaster thingy that he used, I believe, in the second episode. Or part two of the first one. And you have a blast effect piece. Finally, you have a tune accurate front grill with more accurate lights, which are also painted in a different shade of gray than 
this silvery color that they use for the paint on the front here. And of course you get Trailbreaker in his truck mode. Now I do want to look over this a little closer. Um, one of the things I do want to point out though, first, this thing is actually entirely painted on the outside. This whole piece here is a is clear uh, translucent plastic. And so this is all painted and all of this is painted to match. All the plastic of this is is paint. Everything on everything is painted on the outside here. Everything. All right, and getting this guy on the turntable here, you can tell it is a very shiny sort of paint on the outside of it. It's a nice grill with the headlights actually being translucent, which is a nice touch. Overall, the detail is really good with the Toyota badges, the hubcaps that are painted. Um, everything is, is, is pretty nice. He does not have rubber tires. He has plastic tires like his like masterpiece, you know, we've come to expect. The Toyota logo on the back, translucent windows do allow you to see those are the arms back there and some of the weapons. I don't think the weapons look too bad. It looks like he's just carrying a bunch of stuff, but I it, it doesn't work. Um, it would be nicer if they weren't so clear. The front ones are okay. As you can see, they're kind of shiny. You can't see too much. This here, right here, see-through is the head. The Autobot logo shows up right there. Uh, one of the things that I, I find that's kind of odd that they didn't do is so they painted the backside of the mirrors there, but they are not reflective. If they were to chrome those or something, I think they would have stood out a bit more. Also, there are no um, turn signal colors that are usually orange on the back. So one of the things you could do here is you could open the hood, but to first open the hood, you need to move this, move the grill down to sort of weird, but then you could open the hood and that reveals an engine right there. You know, all the engine detail, the, the air cleaner on that side kind of cut off there by the hinges, but you can move the mirrors in if you desire. Uh, you could change the grill out, as I said earlier, just kind of pull that down. This one will fall out a lot. You probably see during transformation, this thing just falls out. The other grill I could get in, but then once I get it in, I could never get the damn thing out. Well, it is very, very difficult. So I'm not sure the differences on that because it is it's too difficult to get out to do on camera. It is just a pain in the ass and I'm not doing it. So just take my word for it. It does have the Autobot logo that shows up there and you can open, open the door here to reveal, well, nothing. You can't really get inside there. There's no interior at all. So I don't know why they made it a point that opens the door. It's, it's really due to transformation there, but like, hey, it's something you could do. Woohoo, you could open the doors, but it really, it, it just breaks it. Overall though, I think it's great. Um, the truck is great. I do wish it was black. It is just very, very gray, and I miss it being a black Toyota pickup. You know, back to the future. So another thing that you could do with this is you could attach the parabolic antenna to the top here, and you just open this piece right here, which reveals two little slots. And on the underside of the antenna piece is right, right there. You just slot that in and so you can display it like this. But it has come time to do some comparisons. So first, let us compare it to Sunstreaker so you get an idea of the length of the truck. So honestly, I think they scale fairly well. I think they, those actually look pretty decent together. And here he is with the previous offering, the most recent, I guess, mainline trail breaker. I don't know why they didn't go for the other lines on him. Maybe because it's not in the cartoon, but I think they would have set it off not really well with have this whole thing here, like the G1. Speaking of the G1, there we are next to his generation one counterpart there. All right, now for the fun part, transformation. So first off for transformation, we're gonna need to open the doors on both sides, get those doors open. And then once the doors are open, we're gonna need to take the back here and separate this whole piece here on the both sides, which are just untabs right there, that little tab. 
And then take the this piece here. You kind of already see it. Wiggle that a little bit. Just don't let that lock again. And that whole piece just comes up like so. And so it just opens up just like that, revealing the legs. And like I said, that fells off. We're just going to go ahead and stick that right there. I'm going to try to not knock anything else off my counter here. So next we have the feet. And I'm just going to actually untab these first because I don't want to break any tabs. doesn't matter which order you do it, but you can take the feet up. Like that, both sides, take those little toes like that, move them away. Take this piece here, snap that up. Now this is kind of hard to do. Don't be, don't be, don't worry too much about it. It's, it's pretty solid. Snaps in right there. Turn them around. Take the bottom part of the tailgate and just open that up to become a heel on both sides like that. Then what we're gonna need to do is get rid of this wheel. So first things what we're gonna do is just untab it. Just tabs in right there and opens right up. So then we're gonna take this piece, open that piece up. And there is, if you can't really see it, and they kind of see it, there's a sliding mechanism in there. And that just, just you just pull that out. You kind of see it right there. And then what we're gonna do is take the, the wheel, move it like this, all the way in, hide that in there. Take this flap, and then keep it like that. So move this down, take this flap in like that, and that seals it up. So I'm gonna take this one and turn that all the way around, and there's so you got one leg. Same thing on the other side. Now we have both of his legs. So now you wanna take his wheels, kinda move them off like that. Make sure he is laying down. See if I can do this sideways. I'll go ahead and move these in and around. Like so, take the doors, and you can rotate the door like this. Rotate, open and rotate. Take the window on both sides. There's a little hinge, put the hinge them in. And then what we're gonna wanna do is move them all the way around. So I see like that, all the way around. And then I always feel like I'm gonna break this little arm and I hope that doesn't happen. Move it like this. So they stay kind of like that and cover those parts of the wheels right there. So this is a part that gets kind of a pain in the ass to do, especially on camera. Um, is where the arms are. But I'm gonna go ahead and just untab this whole piece. So we're gonna untab this, the back door here from these tabs. And then I'm gonna pull these out. These are on sliders here. These little doors are on sliders. And you can see it's kind of loose. So we're gonna leave that like that for now. So I'm gonna take, go ahead and take, move that back like this and take these arms arm and move that up out and around out and around I'm going to take the pieces here these little gun pieces kind of get them out of the way for now and then turn him around and so the head comes out here so what we're going to need to do is extend this the whole way Move this around like that. Push that through so it's on the other side. And if you could push the head, kind of turn it up like this, and push the head through. So just so you can see that better. Push that in, and the head comes right through to the other side, like so. And then we're going to take these pieces here, move those in, move that in, and then separate part of the wheel well here. Let's get it like here, like that. All right, you do that on both sides. There. The way this whole thing kind of connects together is neat, um, but it's one of those unnecessary things, but it, it is neat. So just to show you, you're gonna see a slot there, right? And there's a tab right here. That's the same tab that connects it like you connect it like 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 this, so it goes actually it goes on the inside. Uh, but you tech, connect that tab because there's a hinge here, and that there's a hinge here. So you push that in like this, and get to where those tabs 
can connect. This seems to come apart for me several times during transformation, so don't be surprised if you if I if you see this again. So okay, so we got that whole thing there. I'm gonna turn it around, and then okay, putting it all together, you take this tab and put that in there. Kind of slots that in. And then you could take this and move that down and connect those pieces, and push the head the head here, push the head in, get that lined up, I got the heads in, and then go ahead and take, take this gun, and then you take this, fold that like so, to make it completely round, this comes up, fold that like that. Last, we have the arms. So you take an arm, pull the arm out. There is this flap under here, reveals the hand. The hand comes out, like that. twist it all the way around. It is the same thing on this arm, only instead of the hand, there is a little nozzle. Let's open that up, nozzle comes out, that. twist it around. Now this nozzle actually extends. It is kind of difficult to pull out, but there we go. It extends, you get something like that. And let's put his grill back on because it, like I said, falls off too much and it becomes annoying. There, and let me get him cleaned up and take a look at him. Now, the one thing you'll notice first straight off the bat is he is skinny. I mean, he is very, very skinny. That waist is teeny tiny and he looks just weird there. I mean, it really looks strange. Proportions are odd. And it's, I don't know why they did that. It's just his proportions altogether are pretty odd. I almost canceled my pre-orders because of that. I mean, getting him in hand, he's not hes not terrible for sure. Um, but let's get it close to that face sculpt. One thing I do want to mention is that face sculpt is ugly. It is horrible. It is just an awful face sculpt. The Takara is usually known for their really good face sculpts. And this one just, just, just is terrible. It just is. Those lips are pushed way too close to that nose. He's got way too much of a chin. It's just not a good face sculpt. It is really bad. You can see some more of the detail. Now he is all gray. Uh, like I said before, this is painted, but this is this pieces here are not. This is gray plastic. Plastic. Uh, I think this might be a separate piece of plastic, or it might be painted. I don't know. It's hard to tell on camera here. This is plastic. These are painted. Moving down. He does have some silver paint there on him. And so like there's a little blaster, which not super solid there, but it chromed and gray plastic. So he does have those extra heads. And in order to get those head, those faces rather, you just kind of pull his face off and just slide another one on like that. Now he's happy. And actually, I don't mind that face as, as much. I, I'm, I prefer stoic faces, but I might just keep this one on. But that's kind of how you do that. And so for this nozzle there, come on, focus, focus, focus. There we go. So for that nozzle, you can't accept the blast effect. It actually captures the light pretty nice. And to change the hand, you just open it up. Of course, it's got stuck. So you have this little piece right there. Take either the other fist or like this piece right here. And that just slides in like that and up. And this also is black blast effect compatible with this little tiny nub on the end. Shoot like so. And you could take out either one of his hands. You could put two hands here, which whichever you like. So one of the, his actual com complete strong points is the articulation. The articulation on him is just out of this world. It is very, very good. You get some him in some just excellent poses. So let's go over some articulation. The head is on a ball joint. You get 360. You have 
360 at the elbow. Now this it shows that this is supposed to kind of move and mine doesn't. Like you look on the seat of the back where there's like a, like it's around there. Like this is supposed to be able to, the arm's supposed to be able to come out and then this go up and then come out more. Mine can't do that. I don't know why. I don't know if that's something that's wrong with it, but neither of the shoulders can do that. You have a kind of a butterfly joint there off the shoulder also. Bicep swivel, over 90 on the single hinged elbow. Uh, you have a hinge and a swivel on the fist. His thumb is on a single joint. You have two joints for the fingers. His trigger finger is separated. The rest are uh, single molded for the hand there. You do get an ab crunch. You can see it there. You get an ab crunch. 360 at the waist. Legs can go up about that far and not too far back at all. Uh, on the out, he does have some hip skirts, so you get pretty far out. The, oh yeah, these, these, okay, this is a weird one. So he does have a swivel there at his thigh and here, mainly for transformation, uh, but it doesn't go all the way around. It stops right there and right there. So it's not, well, not 360 degrees. And go ahead and move his knee pretty far. It, ex it extends and shows this piece here, which kind of gives a little bit of, hey, still connected. His feet are excellently, excellently posable. So that's a way to say anything. Uh, a stance, you go point the toe and up. I mean, you get his toes in some fantastic, fantastic uh, poses. So overall... For articulation, it's it's pretty great. Um, so now let's... Oh, and these are articulated, so you can move it up and down. And Plast effects do work with that. All right, so let's move on to some comparisons for height. Now, first up for comparison, here he is with Ratchet. So you can see he's a good height. They're about the same height. He mass shifts huge. Like, I mean, it is a massive mass shift. But then he's all leg. There he is with Hound. All right. And here he is with the Generation 1. My head does not like to stay up there. There we go. There he is with the Generation 1 model. And here he is with the Earthrise. So as you can tell, this one has much better proportions than this one does. All right, well, we'll do my final thoughts here. Uh, just kind of give him a nice dynamic pose here so you can kind of see just how well he does actually pose. Uh, that's actually one of the really strong points about him is he has a great range of posability you could get him into. And I think that's fantastic. Uh, it has a few little, few little neat transformation gimmicks that he does. Um, I think overall that those are good, good things. Another good thing, he's a lot of paint on him. Most of the paint went to the alt mode. A lot of this paint is, is just, or a lot of this is just bare plastic, but the red is painted. Um, they color match it excellent. Although there are some disappointing bits. Like he's, the sculpt is not good. Uh, he's very lanky. The proportions are off. You can see the, the windows right here, which is unsightly. And he's gray. I would prefer him be a much darker gray. Maybe even a deep charcoal would be good if they had to go with the gray. I think this is where cartoon accuracy kind of falls, falters a bit because he would be fantastic, like a dark color, a dark coloration. I just don't think that the cartoon accuracy works with him, especially with the clear windows. They're kind of going halfway in between and not going one way or the other. Uh, the chrome is nice. The head sculpt is garbage. Um, I don't really recommend him, but there really isn't a good other choice. I mean, you have the Fans Toys version, which looks almost just like this. A little bit better in the abdomen, but still, I don't think it's a good choice. Um, there's a few out there, but I just don't think this is Takara's best offering. Anyway, I absolutely appreciate you watching this video, listening to me, checking this guy out. Remember to like and subscribe and all that, and I'll see you in the next review.